Hi, this is Francisco Pulgar Vidal with FKI Quality. Today I would like to speak about the concept of zero defects and whether or not this is good enough for world-class quality. The notion of zero defects is one that is definitely a first step to pursue if you really are not operating as your customers request and you are not meeting certain minimum requirements but it also can become a trap for continual improvement of your operations, lowering of the cost and lowering of the risk. The notion of zero defects has been adopted in different ways by two of the most important methodologies for pro process improvement today, which are Lean and Six Sigma. Some interpretations of Lean and Six Sigma say that, for instance, Lean leads, leads operations towards zero waste and Six Sigma drives operations towards zero defects. But this also begs the question, which is, for instance, how are zero defects measured? Or simply, how are defects measured so that you may claim zero? The way in which defects are measured are against a requirement or a specification. And this requirement and specification would be um, determined in numerous ways by consulting with the voice of the customer and by achieving a negotiated term that ensures that on one hand customer needs are satisfied as best as possible within the cert certain limitations of cost and complexity of operations. Let's look at what is, the, what is the idea behind zero defects or just what is the idea of measuring an operation based on defects. I'll use the example of coffee. Coffee is traditionally uh, when you consult with customers uh, through customer surveys and focus groups, it's traditionally going to be said to be satisfactory when it is served between two uh, levels of temperature. And that is going to be between 120 degrees Fahrenheit and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. These values are equivalent more or less to about 50 Celsius and 60 Celsius. So what we have here is that these two marks in a temperature line determine the acceptable limits. So we could say that from if the coffee is lower, is served at a temperature lower than 120, it is bad because it is just cold. If the coffee is served at a temperature that is higher than 140, it is also said to be bad because it is just too hot. And so this is the area where we're going to want to be serving this coffee. This is what we would say the good part. Observe that when quality is looked at, when a parameter of importance, uh, what we may call a critical to quality parameter, is looked at in this way, the sense of quality becomes binary. Either you are in the good part, or you are bad, or you are bad on both sides. So there is no nuance, there is no gradation, there is no sense of variation, which is actually intrinsic to the world itself and to any type of processes. This can be really an oversimplification of, oversimplification of things. Let's say that we take the temperature of coffee served one morning, and we do this for 10 cups. And let's just say that each one of the cups is going to be marked by the temperature that is measured on a chart such as this one. Now, if we were to try to avoid these um, situations where we have this defective product, we could very well say, well, let's try to establish some type of control so that coffee doesn't get neither too hot nor too cold. From this sample, we can very well say that in this case, the proportion defective is 0 out of 10, and so it is 0%. This is a situation that we may say, look, we have zero defects. Notice that the idea of zero defects focuses on the absence of something bad. That is, here we had two bad ones, one to, one to cold, coffee to cold, coffee to hot. Now we don't have anything that is bad, and therefore we may think that everything is okay. But the, instead of focusing on the absence of something bad, 
could we not focus on the abundance of something good? Notice too that zero, that the notion of defect free, such in this case, depends just like the concept of fat free or dust free, it's a concept that can be influenced by the ability to measure. There could be the, that the, you know, uh, how we're measuring the temperature of the coffee could be influenced by the definition of what is the temperature of the coffee at what moment before you put milk or cream on it or, be, or after that or there's a number of things that can get into that particular way of measuring it. But even more importantly, it is based on a certain negotiation of what free means in every case. So for instance, what would happen if you could convince customers that actually colder coffee is not so bad and that hotter coffee is also not so bad. Graphically, the idea of hotter coffee is also good or colder coffee is also, not so, is also good would be as if in the original chart we had changed these parameters, these limits, to say something like this. Look, actually, 150 degrees is a new standard and actually, a hundred and let's say 115 degrees is the new standard and so if you have these two standards all of a sudden almost magically these two values become inside the new ranges we have basically enlarged the range of acceptability and by doing so we have done away with defects we're now back at zero defects but really how sustainable is this and are we really meeting a, are we really fulfilling the desire of the customer to have the coffee at the right temperature or are we beginning to play games and manipulate the standards? Another problem with the notion of zero defects is that even a, a process that is zero defects now may be so for a short period of time, but what about in the long term? The question is, is it sustainable? But what happens if there were to be, for instance, a warming trend? So I'm just going to very simply keep, let's say that there are now these two that were 125 degrees now, they're observed to be five degrees hotter. And the same thing would happen with these four that were in the middle of the range and these three over here. And now this one that was a border case, this border case now becomes clearly a defect. What if this were to continue? Well, actually, before even we look at how this would, if this were to continue, let's just look at what's the situation that we have now. This defect now actually would be in a report and it would be one out of 10. So now we are at a 10% defective proportion. If this trend were to continue, because maybe, you know, 10% is something that could be deemed to be acceptable in this organization. So when you look at things only from the point of view of defects, one of the things that you lose is the ability to predict, ability to prevent. In one way, you lose the ability to manage this process because you would have been simply looking at a proportion defective and perhaps this didn't seem to be a sufficient trigger to take any action. And by the point that you reach this third situation where now 40% of the cups of coffee are too hot for customer satisfaction and you're starting to burn people's tongues, then by this point, well, it could be uh, late to react. Another problem of this, which I hope is becoming more and more evident, is that what we have here is a view of quality that looks at things after the fact. So the thing is, can we do better than this? Can we actually have a better view of quality that is not this binary view that either you are compliant or you're meeting a specification or not? And the answer is, of course, yes, as we are about to see. Instead of just looking for zero defects, there's a superior view of quality. And it is to set a target and continually seek to hit it with minimal variation. This is how this would look like graphically. We're thinking about the target. What is the target that we want? And let's just say, that again, through surveys and customer focus groups, we have determined that the desirable temperature really is 130 degrees. 
this is uh, what we're going to look at as our target. It's a new concept that takes us beyond the specifications. So we're not looking at how much can we err on this side, how much can we err on the other side, but actually what do we want. This also is zero defects, right? There's the, the proportion of things that are like this is zero, and this takes us to zero defects. But it's far better than this, because now we really are hitting the target that we wanted. This is a new way of looking at quality. And this is actually what we are going to want to get to. Now, this is not overkill. This is not going beyond what is reasonable. Because really, what is reasonable only is the continual pursuit of meeting customer requirements, the continual pursuit of perfection at the right cost and with the right risks. Usually, the view here is that this is enough. This is good enough. We are compliant. We are just meeting the requirements. We're doing what we're supposed to do. But is that really the level at which we want to hold ourselves? Don't you think that there may be a better way to operate, which actually is also less risky and less costly? Actually, there is. And that is this. There's a number of advantages in doing things in this way, as we're about to see next.